the year, how is the budget office spending its time? Very busy, teaming with excitement. Everybody, they are accustomed with that process where they know that the efforts that they're putting through will be down to the government of St. Lucia presenting the national budget in Parliament. So this is very important. Budget. I mean, the average household operates on some of, on a budget. Is the same concept applied to government? Does government need like a budget? How much to spend here and how much to spend there? The average household would, it's important for anybody to be to be to do your budget. To be able to know how you spend the money or your income. And it's the same thing for government. It's the same thing for any household. Um, it's different for the it's different between the difference between a household and the government is that at the household level you do it for yourself and your family. At the government level, you have to ensure that you allocate the resources efficiently across the country, across the economy, and that's what's important. Different types of budgets are there. There are three types of budget. You have the balanced budget. This is where the anticipated revenue that you intend to spend, um, to raise equal the expected expenditure for the fiscal year. So therefore, your revenue and your expenses, they equal. So at the end of the day, you have zero. So that would be what you call your balanced budget. On the other hand, there's a surplus budget. This is where the expected revenue is greater or exceeds the expected expenditure. So then you have a surplus at the end or a bit of a savings. And the, finally, you have a deficit budget. This is where your expected revenue is less than your expenditure or your expenditure exceeds your revenue. And then you become, therefore you have a deficit and this will lead you to borrow in order to finance the deficit. Surplus, balance, deficit, which among the three are the worst? A surplus budget is basically that your income is greater than your expend expenditure. So therefore, you have you have money left over in order for you to save or money left over in order for you to invest. And so when you invest, that means your, you, um, your wealth gets, gets greater and this is where everybody wants to be, at the place where you have the surplus budget. St. Lucia's situation, maybe let's look at financial year 21 to 22. What kind of budget were we operating around that time? 21, 22, I would say we are operating on a deficit budget, um, especially as we're dealing with the, the, the issues of COVID and you had the shutdowns. We were just coming out of it. And so revenue was low and your expenditure was large because you had to deal with um, the issues of the quarantine facilities and you had to, government had to pay for a lot of those things, pay for the, the testing and, and also try to provide income support to the vulnerable persons who needed it. So definitely we were dealing with a, a large deficit because we had to take care of those things. And of course, our income or our revenue was not sufficient to cover and our you know expenditure. Something? Deficit budgets aren't always a bad thing. They aren't always <coughs> negatives, right? Your current deficit is basically where your current expenditure exceeds your current revenue. So for your current expenditure, that would include wages and salaries, goods and services, transfer payments, and interest and debt. Um, so if your current deficit, if you are in a current deficit, means that you have to borrow in order to pay for, for your operations, for government operations. A second type of deficit would be your primary deficit. And this is very important for any country because the primary deficit or primary surplus determines or signals the government's ability to place interest payments on debt. So a deficit on the primary deficit indicates that government must borrow in order to place interest payments. And the overall deficit is the indicator which um, says to you that your total revenue um, is less than your total expenditure that you would be in a deficit situation where you have to borrow in order to finance the deficit. And uh, was that St. Lucia situation, maybe financial year 21, 22 and prior? There's an overall deficit. We've always been an overall deficit because there's no time that we are not able to, we were able to cover because we always had to borrow. So that's the overall where your total expenditure and your total revenue. Right, then so there's a, so yeah. That's, that's then there's, there's a primary deficit where the one where um, where you have to be able to cover your interest on debt, and so and there's the current deficit. Now there have been in the past where we have been the current surplus, but that's a long time ago. Okay, and so um, with respect to the, the 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 primary surplus, it basically where. Um, 
you know, you ensure that the government is able to meet its interest payments on debt. So when you speak to the deficit, it's important to know which one you're referring to. Okay, so I would say um, in more recent times, we have been running a primary deficit where we had to borrow in order to meet our um, interest on, on debt. And, and you could understand why that happened, as I was saying earlier on, um, because um, the situation we have with COVID, you had government revenue was less. Um, we, we had the shutdown and so on. And so we are running a primary deficit. Okay, so, um, and that happened also in 21, 22 as well, where the government ran a, ran a primary deficit. Um, however, in 22-23, the approved estimates when we first started the budget, the, um, it was the, pro the approved estimates indicated that we would have run a primary deficit. However, during the course of the year for government operations, um, we end up with a primary surplus of $29.6 million rather than the $220 million deficit that we had initially projected. So usually when government um, goes to the house and approve the budget, this is just a projection, basically. And so as um, the months go by during your implementation of your projects, your programs and so on, then, um, you know, you'll be able to get the true outturn of what, the true outturn, basically whether you'll be running a surplus or whether you'll be running a deficit. During the course of the year for 22-23, um, we had a bit of a challenge, financing challenges um, in terms of our expenditure, especially on the project side. A lot of our funding agencies, um, in terms of getting the drawdowns for the loans or drawdowns for either for the grants as well, we had a little bit of um, problem in terms of the of the timeliness of those drawdowns, and basically this led to delays in implementation of the projects, and so that also affected expenditure because once you have delays your expenditure will be affected so it reduced expenditure so you have the combined um, the combined effect of reduction in expenditure improvement in revenue because the economy is in recovery recovering from covid and so the revenue some revenue lines were doing very well so you have the combined effect of the recovery of the economy improved revenue as well as reduction in expenditure gave the result that we had in the primary surplus that you saw, that you've seen for us for 22-23. Let's go back to our household analogy. So the mother and father, the husband and wife, they're doing their budget, they're, they're going over their finances and they realize, hey, we have a little bit of a surplus. And to tie it into the question, how might this surplus uh, benefit the household vis-a-vis -vis our government? Well, I suppose for a household, if you find that you have a surplus, then it gives you the opportunity to invest in something that you've been meaning to for a while. You'll be able to maybe buy something for your children's school books or whatever, or invest in education or even invest in a house. And I guess the same thing goes for the government. Um, with the surplus, that with the surplus, we're able to possibly invest in goods and services that would um, benefit the the entire um, population, as well as invest in new and uh, new projects that would assist MSMEs, um, you know, to expand the business, to recover from, um, you know, the, the COVID, COVID-19 and so on. So you have a surplus, does that mean your deficit is going down or has gone down? Once you are, once you able, once you able to eke out the sur a surplus, does that mean your deficit went down? Okay, with a surplus, for instance, the primary surplus, which is what we experienced in 22-23, not a current surplus, but a primary surplus. So the primary surplus basically indicate that you can, you know, pay your debt, pay your, your interest on your debt. However, um, we do not have a, 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 an overall surplus. We had an overall deficit. So government still had to borrow in order to cover its deficit. Is, is that a good indicator of improving financial health to have primary surpluses? Yes, it signals to your creditors that you can pay the interest on debt. And um, it's also, um, it's a good indicator for investors as well in terms of what is happening with the country. Are we on a trajectory to continue experiencing uh, the primary surplus, surplus 
in future financial years or in the near term? Yeah, definitely. As you could tell, um, when the Prime Minister presented his budget, you would have heard that he, he spoke about a primary surplus for 23-24. And this primary surplus is around $42 million that we are projecting. And so, and that is basically because we, we as much as the um, expenditure may have increased, um, projected to increase, however, we're also projecting an increase in revenue as well. And there are many projects and investment projects in the budget that would allow for the economy to expand. So for instance, you have the, the MSME grant that was recently launched, we will allow um, the private sector to be able to get a combination of grant and loan, and this will assist them in expanding their businesses. You also have um, the blue economy, where um, we will be tackling food, food insecurity. We, um, we have other projects, for instance, the on, in um, the Caribbean Digital Transformation Project where the government is investing in technology, improving its services to the private sector. So all of those things together, we expect to lead to economic growth. Overall deficit. Mm -hmm. um, we're still categorized as an overall deficit, our budget? Yeah, well, our budget, our budgets um, have been um, for overall, we've, we've been an overall deficit because government revenue have not been able to cover all of government's um, operations including um, capital investment projects being a deficit situation um, is not necessarily bad um, for either the household or the government um, because sometimes you need to in, you need to make investments um, in certain areas of your life as a, as an individual or as the as the government, and so your normal day to day revenue or income would not be sufficient to cover those investments that you'd want to make. So, for instance, as a student, you want to go and and you know to university, you would have to invest in that, and that would you probably necessarily have, may have to take a loan. And so, it is the same thing for the government. So, if the government would like to invest in a sector. Government would like to invest in new technologies. The government would like to invest, for instance, the blue economy. And so the government day-to-day -day revenue intake would not be sufficient to cover those type of investments. So they would have no choice to borrow. And so this will lead to a deficit. The important thing is that when um, you're borrowing, you have to be sustainable. And that is what's important. And so this speaks to the, um, when you look at your fiscal targets, and so you ensure that you are in keeping with the fiscal targets. And so when you're borrowing, you ensure that you're borrowing for in, um, to, to enhance your investment um, opportunities in the country. And so that at those times, being a deficit can be a, a good thing. Okay, and let's talk about the budget because maybe the average household may focus their attention on their budgeting maybe month to month or, or maybe uh, quarterly or so. How long does a government take to prepare? How, how long is the government in the budget process? <laughs> the project process is pretty a long one. Um, it's almost um, all year long. But um, basically, the budget process starts around April, where um, you know we look at our the fiscal targets, where the research and policy unit will look at the macroeconomic um, framework. And based on that, the budget office would then prepare what is called the budget ceiling. And using the budget ceiling, then we prepare what you call the first call circular. There are two call circulars for the budget. And so the first call circulars would go to all agencies and that would highlight basically the context and the framework in which um, the agencies would have to prepare the budget submission to the government. Okay, and so from there, then they would do the submissions until, um, so that would be from September to October, you're getting the submission, you're going through it with the Department of Economic Development and the Budget Office, assessing those proposals, and then making recommendations to what you call the, the Budget Technical Committee. And the Budget Technical Committee then would do the iterations where it has to now go to another level, which is the, um, the Budget Policy Committee where the Prime Minister presides at that level. And after the prime, the prime minister would then, um, you know, approve for it to go to the budget subcommittee, and then finally to cabinet. And then you have the process where you do the second budget call circular 
informing the agencies what have been approved and then um, the preparation of the budget estimates to, for Parliament and then the preparation of the appropriation bill. So that is a very long process. And so as soon as um, the budget is approved by Parliament, let's say for instance in April, execution starts, you begin to implement your budget, but at the same time, the budget office prepares itself for the next budget, the next cycle. It's continuous. So it's continuous. So you have the implementation and planning happening simultaneously within the budget office. For the countries within the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union, the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank has set fiscal anchor, which is the debt to GDP ratio, to be at 60% of GDP by 2035. And in addition, it is encouraged as the fiscal deficit should be should not be larger than 3% of GDP. Okay, so working towards those prudential levels or those prudential goals is very important as it keeps your debt level on a sustainable path. Because larger, large deficit or higher deficit results in high proportion of government income or revenue being spent on interest payments rather than investment projects that can lead to growth and prosperity. So therefore, unsustainable debt can lead to instability and debt crisis where government will may need to borrow to meet its debt obligations and even be in a situation where it's difficult for it to meet its um, to auto finance its debt. Are we anywhere near debt crisis today? Well, I have to say that St. Lucia has been, has had a very good reputation and St. Lucia has always met its debt. And so this is the first call on the consolidation fund. And so we are happy to say that and I really um, like that we remain in that, in that um, situation, yes. Thank you.